All right, today I'm going to watch the Beasleys reacting to why America's largest state is also its most important in reference to Alaska. I've, I discovered these two a few weeks ago, and I've been watching them pretty much nonstop every evening. So let's see what we've got here with this video. Welcome Alaska. back to the channel. Today's reaction video is Alaska, why America's largest state is also its most important which I would not have said Alaska's the U.S. is the most important state. I'd have said California was, or, te or Texas, or New York. Yeah, one of the bigger ones with a bigger GDP and so far. I just want to point out that they are the cutest couple. They just look like they get along so well. And just also for a little bit of context, I lived in Alaska for about four years when I was little. And then also recently, I uh, worked for Alaska for three years up in the for the government and the fishing industry on the Bering Sea. So let's uh, Which is potentially bringing in <clears throat> more money. It's interesting why Alaska is. We're going to find out. I, it can't be agricultural because a lot of it is like snow and ice, isn't it? Yeah. It's very cold. But maybe it is that. I, I honestly don't know. We're going to find out. Smash the like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. We've got a little giveaway going on Patreon, haven't we? Yeah. If you join Patreon... I know we've advertised it loads, but we do have a movie reactions going on. We've got the Band of Brothers going on, and we're really trying to push it for news, which you'll find out in a couple of months, and it's so exciting. Um, but we're going to do a, once a month. I don't want to brag or anything, but I do want to point out that I believe my webcam is uh, at a little bit better video quality than theirs. Not a knock on them. Not a knock on them at all. I just thought I'd point that out. We're doing a live stream, 30 minute live stream on Patreon, just for patrons. Um, but we're also going to be announcing a Jersey, Jersey, Jersey care package um, um, winner, yeah. pretty yeah. much. And we're going to, it's, it's only uh, going to be about a 20, 30 pound thing. Some fudge is going to be in the Jersey food, some souvenirs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And one legend on the Patreon will win it and then we'll send it off to you. So if, if that sounds Thanks. interesting, you just like the content on, on Patreon if you want to support. We'd seriously appreciate it. If you just want to watch the video, that is enough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And now we're going to find out why Alaska's the most important state, apparently. It's also the largest, and what we're going to get. Are you ready? Let's go. Alaska is the largest U.S. state by a wide margin. Mm. At approximately 660,000 square miles, it is more than twice the size of the next largest state, Texas. Double but Texas, while Alaska wow. is mostly lauded for its size, the state is also incredibly important to the United States for a number of reasons. In fact, it might be the most important state the U.S. has. Here's why. I'm interested why. Link in the description, by the way, to his channel. Welcome to Geography by Jeff. Alaska is not often thought about in the daily in lives of most also. Americans. It's pretty far away, relatively small in terms of population, and is only ever really talked about when we talk about the sheer size of it. But yeah. Alaska actually has a lot going for it, not only for the people who live there, but for the United States as a whole. <clears throat> in today's episode, we're going to explore why Alaska could be the most important state to the United States. Alaska has kind of a long and winding history when it comes to how it ultimately ended up in the hands of the United States. Okay. While those of us who live in the United States take for granted that our largest state has always been there, the reality is that, <coughs> were it not for a particular set of circumstances, Alaska would very likely remain with Russia remain or be a part of Russia. Canada today. Oh, wow. Alaska, of course, has always been inhabited by various indigenous tribes that still largely exist today. But during the Age of Exploration, the first Europeans began making inroads into the general area. Okay. In fact, it's theorized that Russian explorers could have arrived on the shores. There's actually still a lot of Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska. You've got a pretty prominent one there on Kodiak Island, and then there's one also in Dutch Harbor. And they're scattered, you know, throughout other towns. Of Alaska in the, the mid 1600s. Wow. That's Regardless really of whether Russian explorers made it to Alaska that long ago, they certainly were. I have been getting asked a lot about some of my favorite webinar tips and tricks for the first to make it in the 1700s. This began Russia's American colonial YouTube, ambitions. So the first full Russian settlement was founded in 1784 on Kodiak Island. Makes me look Russia's cheap. colonies in Alaska, however, were never very profitable. Most of Russia's population centers were and still are based in the western part of their country, near Europe which was very far away from the new Alaskan colonies, given the transportation technologies it's available at the time. Compared to the and not only that, but Alaska was also very inhospitable. During the mid-1700s and 1800s, the world was far colder than it is today. And this led to an Alaska that was much more difficult to live in. But Russia wasn't the only European power with eyes on Alaska <clears> at the time. 
The Spanish and British also believed that the area should belong Obviously to the them. British. Yeah. The Spanish Obviously. held that the entire region was theirs based on a proclamation made in the 1400s, <laughs> but no Spanish colonies or forts were ever founded in Alaska. Okay. Likewise, the British would establish a few trading colonies in the mid-1700s, but mostly focused their efforts on the rest of British Canada, including their ongoing dispute with the United States over the Oregon country. By the 1860s, the Russian government was ready to abandon its colony in Alaska. Overhunting severely reduced the fur-bearing animal population, and competition from British and Americans made it unprofitable for the Russian Empire. Oh, yeah. This, combined with the difficulties oh, of... What I want to know is, if you're stood here in Russia, can you see Alaska? It, cause it looks like the difference between Jersey and France. It does, doesn't it? Because I know it's like, obviously, it's on a map, so it's actually a lot... You can't see from mainland... But there are two islands called Little Diomede and Big Diomede Island. And um, one belongs to the United States and the other belongs to Russia. And you can actually walk across the ice some winters to them. And I think it's less than a mile that separates them. And you can actually see the other island from there. But you can't see the mainland. That's a lot. That's hundreds of miles there. Large distance. Do you reckon you could? Yeah, no. I reckon you could. Let us know in the comments if anyone's ever done that. Like, do you remember what we said about if Russia and America did nukes? Yeah. Why don't they just do it there and then no one else gets inside? <laughs> if, if Russia got beef with America, yeah. they just do it there. And then if America got beef with Russia, they just do it there. Oh, I'm this tiny they, bit. Yeah, but then no one else has to get involved. <laughs> they just nuke. That's not how it works, unfortunately. Yo, that makes logical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Canada is getting the radiation fallout. Yeah, sorry, but. <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry. It's better than me That's brutal. Yeah, but, oh, they're yeah, gunning for you. No, but I know, it's better than me getting it when I'm just sitting here living my life in Jersey. They don't yeah, have nothing to do with it. That's not how it works, unfortunately. Applying and protecting such a distant colony reduced interest in the territory. Not least, Russia at the time was feeling like the Alaska Territory would eventually fall into Britain's hands if they didn't do something. So they opted to sell the territory to the United States instead. In 1867, the United States and Russia formalized the sale of the Alaska Territory for a total of $7.2 million. Ooh, Alaska as the U.S. territory would exist as a military colony of sorts, with the military running the state between 1867 and 1884. From then, the U.S. president would appoint a governor to oversee the territory. Cities within Alaska were not even able to be formally incorporated until the year 1900. Dang. And it would take another 59 years for Alaska to become a full state with the passing of the Alaska Statehood Act. The United States bought Alaska at the low, low price of about $11 per square mile. That's an incredible That's deal. deal. And while is Alaska it? is still not very populated... I suppose that way, because it is so big, 7.2 actually not that bad. Because it is so huge. It worked, like I say, it works at like £11 per square mile, so it works out, you know? Mm. But if it was smaller, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. This very far away from the rest of the United States, it's still incredibly important for the country as a whole. But before we get into exactly why Alaska is so important, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. Same More here. fun geography videos uh -oh. are just a single click away. Bread basket. The next While bread scientists basket. certainly weren't predicting the kind of rampant climate change <clears throat> we're beginning to experience today, though some scientists were sounding the alarm as early as 1820, Wow. It's turned out to be an incredibly wise investment in terms of future resource gathering. But that's not to say climate change will be good for Alaska. Quite the contrary. According to the National Climate Assessment created by the U.S. Global Change Research Program, Alaska is heating at a rate twice as fast as the rest of the United States. I mean, it's got to be this has already caused widespread glacier melt, reduced sea ice, reduced permafrost leading to the drunken forest effect, and of course, an drunken overall drier climate effect. that leads to larger and more no. dangerous wildfires. The drunken oh. forest effects where the permafrost starts melting and you got, you know, the ground's just so soupy there that the trees just start falling over and they're standing up crooked and leaning and stuff oh, like that. But what is the drunken forest effect? Yeah. The swinging trees. Is that is that yeah. what it is? Just the trees swinging. Well, but she knows. I think it is. Let us know in the comments. I think you might be right, but let us know in the comments just in case. There are some potentially huge benefits to the United States at large if climate change were to cause serious disruption to the rest of the country. The biggest being agriculture. As it turns out, owning Alaska during the age of climate change could lead to a new breadbasket for the United States. Hmm. Current climate change models are predicting that the traditional breadbasket regions of the country, such as the California Central Valley and the Midwest, will become drier, 
Um, making growing a vast quantity of crops very challenging. Move them up to Alaska. But Alaska, a huge state already with quite a lot of water, could pose as a potential solution. Okay. Between now and the year 2100, the amount of days Alaska is expected to be able to farm food will double. This means that food that normally wouldn't have been able to be grown in Alaska, due to the amount of time required in warmer weather, will suddenly become much more viable. Oh, wow. Grains, such as barley and wheat, could become a large agricultural product for Alaska. I actually wrote an essay on something similar to this about, you know, with the climate change in the future, Canada is actually poised to become a world superpower. Because a lot of that, the corn belt and the wheat belt of the United States is going to shift up into Canada, <clears throat> giving them an overabundance of food. Okay. Just as it becomes less viable in the South, and not only will the growing days double, but the amount of land available to grow on will expand more than 100 times. Fairbanks, for example, can't grow much today, but over the next few decades, it could become an agricultural hub, mm. shipping food all across the world. Thankfully for Alaska, it's already in a very strategically opportune area for moving things around quickly. <clears throat> so the reason it's getting bigger is because the actual land isn't getting bigger, it's just heating up so it's melting and becoming suitable for agriculture. Yeah. I got like, yeah, yeah. I, was, I thought it was just growing for a second. I was like, what? But that makes sense, doesn't it? No, the ice is gone. Yeah. While food generation from Alaska will be very important for the United States in the future, Alaska is... Damn it. Hugely important for the United States strategic operations today. The okay. whole state of Alaska and its biggest city of Anchorage are both <clears throat> located near the North Pole. And because of this, despite what many maps would have us believe, Alaska is located very close to a number of the world's most important countries, including those that compete directly with the U.S. If we were to draw a straight line, the distance between Anchorage and Beijing is 3,970 miles. Moscow, 4,342 miles. Tokyo, 3,457 miles and Berlin at 4,523 miles. To put this in perspective, the straight line distance from Washington, D.C. to Moscow is Jim. nearly 4,900 <laughs> yeah. miles. I just, it, it's weird seeing it like this way on the map. I know, it's confusing like this, but yeah, Berlin. Yeah, this yeah. way is confusing me. So where about is England then? I can't see. Um, I can't, England I can't are tell. like... Oh, oh no, we're there. Where are we? are there. We're right there. Move up your mouse. Nope. Yeah, you got Move. Russia here. No, give me oh, we're here. Yeah, yeah there we go. We're yeah. upside down. This is why I'm it, saying. It is confusing, isn't it? Because you got Russia. I'm just not. Europe. I'm not used to seeing us upside down. So like Ukraine's God, there, Mars isn't is it? Tiny. <laughs> yeah, that's France, there, isn't it? No. That's France, there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Compared to oh yeah, compared to like Russia, China, and stuff like that, and I mean, the US. It's, it's well weird that we're upside down. But it's big compared to us. Yeah, it, it's a bit confusing. That's confusing me. Los Angeles that's to funny. Beijing is over 6,200 miles. Because of these shorter distances, the U.S. military has a huge force stationed in Alaska year-round. As you watch this video, over 22,000 Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marine Corps personnel, along with 4,700 Guardsmen and Reservists, are operating within Alaska today. And with Alaska's strategic location, the U.S. military can deploy almost anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere in very little time. But while Alaska is definitely important for military strategy, Alaska is also very important for consumer logistics. Yeah. For the same reasons as we previously covered, there exists a huge freight terminal for air cargo in Anchorage. Yep. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, over 1.6 million tons of freight flew through Alaska in 2021. Oh, wow. That's an incredible amount of freight. California, which has a population about 55 times larger than Alaska, had about 2.1 million tons of freight go yeah, they through. Got a lot going Bottom in. line, shipping freight through Alaska cuts down on travel costs quite a bit. And while air freight transportation yeah. is incredibly important, receding ice in the Arctic Ocean will also <clears> yield <throat> new potential trade routes in international waters close to the North Pole. Oh, okay. The prospect of a maritime link in the Arctic between Japan, China, and the United States is growing and will oh, only wow. increase the strategic importance of Alaska to the United States. Hmm. That's mad, isn't it? I, you don't think about that stuff. You just hear the ice is melting, it's bad because sea levels are rising and stuff like that. But yeah, it's opening paths, isn't it? Yeah. Which then saves money because it's shorter. It's weird. That's mad, isn't it? It's little things you just don't ever think of. While Alaska is important for the United States in terms of military logistics and future agriculture, the state today is in a bit of a bad situation. Since 2010, the state has suffered from rather anemic growth. In fact, the state is expected to lose population over the coming decades, okay. which is never something a state wants to see. Definitely Much not. of this lack of growth is due to the fact that the current economy of Alaska is incredibly dependent on natural resource development. 
the biggest of which is the state's oil industry. And unfortunately for Alaska, that well is kind of running dry. According to recent state plans, the state's current intake of revenue from oil is about one-eighth as much as it was in 2012. Oh, wow. For a state with no sales tax, no income tax, and very few taxes overall, this doesn't bode well for the state's solvency into the future. They need this is compounded by the current yeah. system where the state of Alaska actually pays its current residents based on its expected income from the oil industry. <clears throat> so not only are Alaskans not accustomed to paying taxes, but they actually expect money from their state every year. Luckily for yeah, Alaska, I, I the state is just so incredibly important to the U.S. Yeah, that's actually called it's the Alaska's Permanent Dividend Fund. And I remember when I lived in Alaska when I was little, you know, it was always an exciting time of the year because every person, even kids, get a check. And I remember, I think I was there like the first year they did it. And I had a brother, well, half brother and half sister, my mom and dad and me, and it was $1,000 that year. And this was, you know, in the mid-80s. So we got $5,000 from the state. And I got to spend a little bit of money from toys. Not the $1,000, though. But if it were to get into any serious trouble, Uncle Sam would absolutely make sure it stays afloat. Alaska is the United States' secret superpower. Wow. While the state is not a secret, of course, the power and importance of the state will help solidify America's security and dominance <laughs> well into the future. And for those of us living in the United States, we should all feel lucky that the U.S. owns it and not Russia. I hope true. And it's mad that the U.S. own it because... Russia wanted to just bypass Britain. Because, like, yeah. nah, we can't let them greedy Brits have it back in the day at the US. <laughs> which, when you, you weren't enemies back then. Which it would is... have been a bit scary to have Russia on border in Canada and America. Though, oh, yeah, it? they're a tell you there where we could That's potentially just good. go and put tanks and stuff out there. There's no sea involved stuff like because they can put them over time. Mm, and have, That would be quite mental. That would be a different world, wouldn't it? Um, smash that if you enjoy, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Alaska seems like a little little hidden player for the little future. Hidden gem. May come there. Maybe, maybe we'll end up there one day. You know, that's a pretty good video. I think they, um, they left out, you know, the fishing industry in Alaska. And I think that's pretty significant also left out you know they got a lot of gold mines not as many as they used to have and then they got some controversial ones that they're wanting to put in but alaska still has a lot going for it and with that i believe we'll go ahead and end this video and i'll give a go at trying to edit it <laughs>